The flight was normally about 10 hours, but that night we had a 60 knot wind. And um, it was a headwind. And about uh, maybe 300 to 400 miles outside of uh, Keflavik, I mean out of, uh, out of Argentia, I'm sorry, I saw something below the horizon on the water that looked like approaching a city at night. It was just kind of an ambient light, no definition whatsoever, but the same thing that you would see if you were approaching a large city at night. And all of a sudden we saw on the water a yellow halo that was very, very small about 15 miles away. And it came up to 10,000 feet like that, that for a fraction of a second. And I thought it was going to go right through us. And I disengaged the autopilot, pushed your nose over because I was going to go under it at the angle it was coming toward me. So what happened, the minute that I did that, it was up at our altitude and I could see nothing outside of the cockpit but this craft. And, and, uh, and uh, so I didn't know which way to go. And then all of a sudden I heard a racket. I didn't know what it was. I said, Fred, what the hell was that? He, he looked around and he says, oh, he said everyone was ducking in the back of us and they collided and they were all laying on the deck, <laughs> deck back there scrambling on the deck. So when I looked back, it wasn't there. And he says, it's over here on the right-hand side. Now, it was about a, a mile or so away on the right-hand side. And it kind of drifted forward maybe to a position maybe five miles away. And that's where it stayed with us for quite some time. This is when we could first see it wasn't above our our altitude, it was below our altitude, but it was still above the horizon where you could see the side of the craft, you could see the dome, and you could see the color around the, the, the perimeter of the craft. And l then we knew that it was a friendly encounter. I said, Doc, did you uh, see what we saw? And he says, yeah. He says, he looked me straight in the eye, he says, yeah. He says, it was a flying saucer. So I went back uh, forward and I said, Dal, whatever you do, don't tell anybody we saw anything, it'll lock us up as soon as we get on the ground. He said, it's too late. He said, I just called Gannon to control to see if they could track this by radar. So that's how the, 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 it got out. So when we landed at um, Argentia, the Air Force was there, and they interrogated us. And the captain that did the interrogation did a real good job, but you could tell that this wasn't his first time that he'd ever interrogated anybody as far as these craft were free. When that question was asked, it was 300 feet that came in my mind. And when I got the report out of the archives in 1991, I'd never seen anybody else's report. Everyone had been anywhere from 250 to 350 feet in diameter. Now, the velocity when it left us was estimated from between eight, uh, between 1,000 miles an hour to 2,000 miles an hour. And when I looked at the, at the report, uh, Al Jones had uh, estimated 1,800 miles an hour. Mine was a thousand, another one was 1,500 miles per hour in that range. It turns out that the radar report, which I've never seen, said it was 1,800 miles an hour. So the other plane commander was sitting in the seat, uh, took my seat, he, he hit it right on the nose. Now my boss, that's another thing. When he found the report in the archives uh, in uh, Wright Patterson on Project Blue Book and talking to uh, Com uh, Colonel Watson, uh, he, when he came back to me, uh, he, he gave me the speed of 1,800 miles. I said, where did you find that out? And he said, well, it was a radar report that said that. The, the document that I found was the official document that uh, the Air Force had put together, different sources that came to them. And it was originally filed, it was under Project Grudge, you can see in their written Project Grudge. But on the, the front page, it says Project Twinkle. Now, this is where they put a lot of ones that they had to get rid of somehow. It was Project Twinkle. So it... It was in Project Blue Book and Project Grudge and what other project I don't know that it was in. Like that, 15 miles in a fraction of a second. I disengaged the autopilot to push your nose over because we're at a collision course. And when I did, I just saw it head on. It's 300 feet in diameter. We knew that. We had a knowing like somebody was telling us, 300 feet in diameter. So at that time, I heard a hell of a noise. And I said to friend, what the hell was that? He said, well, the navigator and the radio man ducking fell, it hit their head, one hit their head, hurt their arm, they were scrambling on the deck, so I, hell no, I thought it hit us underneath. So I said, well, where in the hell did it go? And Fred said, it's right over to the right, I can see, I couldn't see it. So it, it drifted forward about five miles from it, never got to the altitude that we were at, a few hundred feet below. I began to watch it, well, we knew then it was a friendly encounter, it just wanted us to see him. So then I went to, to engage the autopilot again, the magnetic compass was going like this, 
And the bird dogs, which is direction finders, the two of bird dogs, they were pointing right at this thing, just vibrating like this. And there were a lot of electrical things in the airplane that went haywire. So I told Fred, did you see that coming? He says, hey, it was close, close, close. It was doing this. <laughs> and so I, I went back to the vacuum operator. That's the old airplane, the vacuum operator, hydraulic operator control. So I'd go back to that and set. So then we sat there and watched it for a while because it just paced us, stayed with us. And so the other crew wanted to land at large engines, so I had sent back. They came forward. Al Jones, which was the original plane commander, took my seat. And the, it was still there. He was watching. And as I was walking back aft, he decided he was going to chase it. <laughs> and so he disengaged. Him. When I get back aft, I wanted to see how the passengers were doing. They're all on the right-hand side. They could see the underneath the wing. And then, I, oh, hell, I recognized the doctor back. back. He was a, a psychiatrist out of Bethesda. Naval Hospital, plus a lot of other things. So I said, better talk to him first. So I, Cornell said, did you see what we saw, Doc? Doc, he grinned at me and looked me straight down. Yeah, he says, yeah, that was a flying saucer. I didn't look at it. I don't believe in such things.